know, when you're such a big fan of hip hop and then you sort of, you get to being around that, like in that world all the time, is just nuts. Like you can't explain it, it's so much fun. We're in Dubai and like on some prince's mega yacht, jumping into the Gulf and, there's, and then you're off to the next place and another new city and then abundance of everything. Hip hop music and drugs and girls and money. It's just everything that you see on TV or music videos or Instagram or whatever. It's just all the time. It's just fucking nuts, man. And then you're pinching yourself at the same time because you're like, ah, oh, this, um, this is what I always wanted. My name is Tristan Stefan Edward and I'm a photographer. I bought a little sort of point and shoot and it was just like, you're a teenager, you're discovering the world and you're doing all these things that are new to you and fresh and you think are really cool. So I wanted to sort of document that. Always sort of involved in the music industry in some way. So it just made sense that I naturally progressed to shooting shows and I would shoot Australian artists. Like I was really into Australian hip hop and all that sort of stuff. I was just a big fan of music since I was young. My goal was to get a portrait or get an intimate moment that nobody else had. To be able to have that rush of hustling your way to get backstage and get to an artist that you sort of connect with. And everyone doesn't get to go backstage and have these moments. You get all your hip hop news from like The Source or Vibe magazine and it was all overseas artists. So that's what I grew up looking at who, who I was fans of and I just wanted to sort of be involved in that sort of culture and just the music and all that sort of stuff. My first concert was like Snoop Dogg when I was like 12 and he was one of the first sort of portraits I ended up shooting. I always wanted a DMX portrait, so that was a big top of the list for me. I really connected with him as a teenager just because when he came out, he just came out really raw and honest and rugged and angry and just finding my way through life. And I really just connected with the feelings that he put through for his music. He's sort of in and out of jail for such a long time, on and off drugs for such a long time, very volatile. Just one of those moments in your career that I thought about for such a long time, like I'd love to shoot a DMX portrait. I'm not going to really chase it out. I just have this feeling that it's going to happen. And then it sort of happened and I just felt really good and I felt, yeah, this is my part. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. After I shot him, I was like, damn, I kind of wish that I had a light and I could, you know, make it a bit moodier and darker and stuff like that. But then as I had time to reflect, I just thought, no, this is perfect. It's just stripping back everything, white, clean background. You can see genuine look in his eyes and just like an honest portrait of a man. You shoot all these international artists. All right, well, after doing it here for so long, what's the next progression? You've got to graduate to like the big smoke, which is like LA. And then as soon as I touched down, um, I hit up a few people. One of them was um, g -Eazy's manager, Matt. And I said, hey, I'm here. And they're like, hey, do you want to come to Hawaii in a few days? I'm like, oh, I just got here. But yeah, no worries. And that begins the roller coaster of like mayhem all the time. And then you go into award shows with like all these people that you see on TV, they're just next to you. And then you're jumping on a jet and then you're going somewhere else and then just, just being on constant holiday but with your camera and you're getting paid to do it at the same time and you're living your dreams. It's fucking sick. <laughs> Which is what my dream was. So it was like crazy. Like, how did I end up here? I had flights booked to come back to Australia to go to the embassy because me and my wife have got our green card. And then during those flights being booked, like COVID happened. After all the chaos of three or four years was just like a, whoa, like what is life? Like I've gone from just traveling the world, to like, whoa, it's like COVID, back in Australia, had a child, bought a place. There's a lot to take in and, and adjust to. So that sort of made me confront a, a lot of things and things I was thinking about and just probably things I was just not, I didn't have time to think about 
you know, partied my whole twenties, didn't really think too much. You know, I just shot things like what used to serve you before, might not serve you now, like what's the purpose of life? You know, you start to think about your mortality and stuff when you have a child. You know, that was just a natural progression for me through life. I just got to a point where I would only pick up my camera if I was getting paid. And that's not a good place to be. So I just bought a little camera, started carrying it around and just started shooting things that I enjoyed, little things, little snippets of just everyday life, like just to make it fun again. You start to feel that bit of a rush and then you lean into that, it's like, it feels good. Just to explore the unknown, the stuff that I've been like running from for a long time. Just, just to be curious again, like is what I started photography. I feel like I use my camera as a tool sometimes to connect with the world and sort of make my way through the world and just make sense of the world. I started just putting them into a big file and I printed them out and I feel like there's some sort of common themes and, I've, and, I've, and I look at them and I start to see little moments of underlying themes in my life that I might not have been sure were there. So purely just going through the world and not thinking too much and just shooting stuff that have caught my eye or I enjoy. And once I print them out and look at them as a whole, I feel like there's things ongoing throughout them and they're all connected to all these underlying sort of things that I think about. A lot of them seem to be dark. There's a bit of chaos. There's a bit of loneliness, love family, depression, the unknown mystery, raw emotion, just a lot of childhood stuff, a lot of empty spaces. It's like just this one down here, like made no sense to me when I shot it, but for some reason just makes total sense to, to me now. And that's why the project is called Making Sense of It All and it's just questioning all these things unique to me and just having it represented through a visual means. That's what I'm really trying to like maneuver through now. Pass on a feeling that I have through a photograph. And the music stuff still interests me. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I still have a like big passion for that. And I love creating sort of portraits in all that world, but just, I like exploring this new world too. It's a little new and exciting, like a new buzz for me. Yeah, I think that the main thing is just slow down and think, because I didn't think for so long, I was just running around like a madman, just I think there's a good time for reflection to like really slow down and think about, move more with intent. And you're not going to have all the answers, but just be aware of like what you're feeling underneath and start to explore those, those feelings and thoughts. <laughs>